your hands are lifting. Come on, begin to open your mouth and worship it for a moment. Come on. Father, we exalt you, we magnify you, we lift your name up high. There is no other name by which men can be saved. Every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. We lift up the name of Jesus in this atmosphere right now. And we say, Jesus, be glorified and let your flesh glory. Oh God, be glorified in the midst of your people. We thank the Lord that Jesus, the line of the tribe of Judah, that you will let out a war in the Holy Ghost today. That will run out every demonic force and everything that be not like you. We serve notice on the forces of hell that your assignment has ended. And that Jesus, the King of all kings, is present in this atmosphere. We decree and declare that these are moments of healing, miracles, signs, and wonders. That the gifts of the Spirit are stirring in this place right now. We decree and declare our minds and our thoughts are being elevated to think the thoughts of Christ right now. We find every single spirit that comes to hold us in the whole place. But we decree and declare this is a new season. It is a new day. And we embrace it now in the name of Jesus. Say it or not, we command you to flee from this place. We command sickness and disease. Your power will be broken. the dream. 
dream that you hoped you would be. But the Lord said, God, I actually go right where I want you to be. I am taking you into a pushing moment. I am taking you into a moment of the press. But the Lord says, I'm going to hold your press about the flow out of you. It's going to be about your mouth and your mind that's going to be above your imagination. It's going to be above what you've seen before. And I'm going to begin to not only use you, but the Lord said, even though it's seed, my hand is upon you. And the Lord said, listen, he said that the devils that tried to be upon their fathers and even your life will not come upon their lives. For he said he is breaking the power of the generational curses that were trying to come. And he said, daughter, I have heard you in prayer. And I see you in the room on your knees crying out for your children. And the Lord said, I have answered a mother's prayer. And I'm going to begin to move in a fresh way. Revival is not just upon you, ma'am. But revival is upon your house. And God's going to add loose
this room does not make you mean that God is about to use you to transform your city or your family. That has to do with your personal relationship with Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. John eleven twenty five. 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Jesus saying, I'm revival. Revival is a person who desires for you to engage him at a different level. The issue is that we have, we have talked about the children of Israel uh, in the Old Testament, but we are very much like them. Wow. We form the God that we want to worship. Many of us in the room have not seen revival because you've been worshiping at a type of Jesus that you created. Wow. It's not really Jesus the Christ, Son of the Living God. It's a Jesus that you formed in your mind. A Jesus that makes me feel comfortable. A Jesus that never ever deals with my character. A Jesus that I treat like a prostitute. And I tell him, go and get my stuff. And go and get my money. Hit your people real quick and tell them that's not Jesus. That I am. You are beginning to form the idea. And this is why when Jesus doesn't do what we desire him to do, that's when we start flaking off at church. That's when we don't worship no more. We don't show up for corporate prayer anymore. That's when we don't have any more study time. Y'all show quiet in London. Why? Because Jesus didn't go and do what we wanted him to do. Most of the prayers we pray is nothing but witchcraft on God. God use me, God use me. You don't want God to use me. You want to use God. You want to control God with your control and self. In prayer, talking about, Lord, I need my car shut up. What you need to be is delivered. God does not need you anymore to come into prayer bowing and crying for stuff instead of crying out for him. He is sick and tired. I mean sick and tired. Look behind you and find you somebody and look halfway safe and tell him he's sick and tired. He's sick and tired of your laying dead prayers that all are focused upon a job, all are focused upon a husband, all are focused upon a wife. And I see marriage idolatry in this building and the spirit of God is going to come after it. But there's about 20 of you that God said, I'm not giving you a husband or a wife till you bow your knee to a real Revival is a person. He's a person. I'm, I'm called to bring the fundamentals of relationship with Jesus back to the forefront. You are trying to skip steps. You're trying to skip steps. You think you can just jump into the flow. Because your gifts have tricked you. Oh, yeah. Come on. Come on. Y'all didn't hear today? I said your gifts have tricked you. No, I, I can say this before because I've been tricked before, Jamal. I mean, my gifts tricked the heck out of me because I could flow in my gifts, but I was living like a hoe. Are you still in here? I said, ho, hello. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Ho. I was preaching, but me and my girlfriend, now wife, I gotta tell the real story. <laughs> we were laying down, you hear? And there was some stuff going on, but I was getting up and preaching, and the power of God hit the place, and you'll leave feeling like, oh, look, God is winning with you. He's using donkeys back then, and he's still using them today. Look at your neighbor and say, you just might be a donkey. Crazy people in the office online. Go 
It's like, I don't know if he come on over here like Peter. Pop. I'm, I'm, on, I'm on a goal to talk about him in every city I go to. Peter, dog gonna pop up. I hope they close him down. Oh, false prophets. It's biblical. That's the problem tonight. You never met a real prophet. God raises up real prophets and apostles to deal with doctrines of demons. And you'll never be able to find the truth if nobody calls out the book. I said, Peter, dog gonna pop up. You can sit down somewhere. Miracle spring water. Water out your toilet. A miracle spring water. Sit in there and your money. Well, just because there's manifestation, that's our problem. We've seen all of these wonders with their gifts. We've seen all of these people with their gifts. We've even seen people come, like the apostle said, come into your nation with gifts. And everybody likes gifts. Come on, talk to me, Christmas. Hello, somebody. Ain't no, 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 no. Anybody in here not like for everybody like gifts. And if you don't like it, you're lying. You know you like stuff. We all like gifts. So then it's become a culture in the body of Christ. Bring us gifts. 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 Nobody looks to see if that man's wife is on the front row depressed or not. As long as you bring us the gifts. Nobody checks if his children are suicidal. As long as you bring us the gifts. Nobody checks to see that he's stealing the church's money. Because as long as you bring us the gifts, we'll ignore the mess for the gifts. Revival is not the manifestation of gifts. Revival begins with your love for Jesus. skip it, but it will always tell on you. What I've learned in my own life is that the devil wants to get you to a certain place of affluence before he pulls off the curtains. And you may think you're getting away with it. I'm telling my own story. You may think you're getting away with it, but God will bring you to a certain, and the enemy will try to get you to a certain place of affluence, and he will open the door. Now I'm going to deal with you for a minute. Some of you have thought that different doors have opened for you because it's mercy. You said, I mean, I know I'm living in a nest, but look at mercy. I got a promotion on my job. You're like, oh my God, you know, I know I'm not doing right, but look at mercy. The Lord has given me elevation. You're calling it mercy, but that's not what it is. It's actually your Pharaoh who said this, that I will give you amenities inside of your bondage so that you will be comfortable in your bondage and not leave. Y'all miss this. Some of you missed it totally. It is not always that Jesus has opened the door. Sometimes it's Satan that opened the door so you will feel no pressure to come out of what you did in there. And so many of us are somewhere. Thank God for mercy. You gotta check that door. This is a season where you cannot walk through every door that opens. Some of you need to begin to check that Listen behind that door. Y'all ain't working with enemy today. You gotta be someplace. You find you a door. It look like it. You gotta put your ear to that door and listen to what's on the other side before you walk in. You gotta discern the door. How strong is this door? Is it God's mission for me to walk through the door? Every door that opens doesn't mean that it's Jesus. So you gotta ask that relationship with Jesus. I'm gonna say a couple of things that you're gonna say is just elementary. You have to read your Bible. Somebody say, get in love 
with revival. So, so listen, you, you've got to build that relationship with Jesus because even Jesus, he came and he said, who do men say that I am? Here's the truth. Most Christians, uh, both in this nation and in America, they don't really know who he is. We don't know who Jesus is. We, we know what people taught us about Jesus. That's why you got to study for yourself. Before I studied for myself, I believed that women could not preach or pastor. Hillary. God had to send me to Oklahoma and say, study the Bible for yourself so that you can find out what the truth is. Are you understanding this today? So some of us, we have not gotten a real revelation of Jesus because all we did was copy what's in front of us. Instead of studying for ourselves. Jesus went and asked him in Matthew chapter 16, who do men say that I am? And listen, Peter got up and said, you, you are Jesus, you're the Christ, you're the son of the living God. And he said, you know what? This revelation that you've gotten, you didn't get from flesh and blood. This revelation that you've gotten, you've only gotten from the Father above. He began to say, you know what? Now, upon this thing, this revelation, the revelation of Jesus, I will build my church. If you don't have the revelation of Jesus, you cannot appropriately and you cannot correctly build the way that God wants you to build his house. It's only built on the revelation of Jesus Christ. Somebody say the revelation of Jesus Christ. Jesus, not just as your Savior, Jesus as the Lord of your soul. Can we deal with the soul for a moment? The soul, the seat of your mind, your will, and your emotions, your soul. Many of us have not paid attention to the condition of our soul. The enemy has still made you feel like you can't have a devil. The biggest trick the devil played on the world is that he doesn't exist. And so we operate on a daily basis, seeking Jesus, searching for him, but many of us are missing that there are demonic forces connected to your soul. Are y'all in here today? You're like, I can't have my demon. Christians can't have a demon. What do you think that is that you've been dealing with all these years? Why you still broke? Why your legs are still open? You're quite here. It's called a demon. Things that are sent from hell to connect with our soul to hold us in places of bondage. And until you realize and receive the revelation of Jesus, you're going to miss out on the freedom that God wants to bring in your life. And I believe before we step out of here this afternoon that God is going to set some people free. Now somebody ought to about thanking God right there. I said he wants to set some people free. I said he wants to set you free. He wants to get you out of that bondage because your secrets are killing you. And there's about 10 of you in here that's been carrying secrets and nobody knows anything about what you've been struggling with and you've been trying to serve over your devils. But the light of God is shining forth in this building today to deal with the things that's trying to entangle you and to bring you into a place of freedom. Somebody have a freedom. Revelation of Jesus will bring you into freedom. Is this good to you already? So you need deliverance. You believe that? Not only do you need deliverance, you need counseling. <laughs> Some of you, you don't know I me. Mean, the devil cast out you. Some of you need to sit down with somebody. I mean, I mean seriously. You, you need to sit down with somebody, and, and not just anybody who's you know a professional friend. Not, not somebody who just made up that they can just sit down with people and counsel. I mean a professional. To help you. Somehow we begin to think that getting some type of help through counseling makes us some kind of bad individual. But I'm trying to help you. All that trauma that you received, like we didn't cast that devil out, but some of that stuff, man, that you've been dealing with, you need to sit down and talk about that and get some freedom connected to how you process. We can say, come out and you can get free, but we got to deal with how you process now. How that after you've gotten free, that you, you still, you know, whenever you see an individual that reminds you of your past, you still jumping. 
Whenever you get into certain encounters that remind you of those seasons, you're still stuck in that place. We've got to get you delivered, and then we've got to bring you into a place of receiving some level of counseling. Why are you talking about this, Sherman? Because the shepherd, Jesus the shepherd, wants to restore your soul. That only comes with building a real relationship with Jesus. Which means we cannot lie in prayer. Which means we cannot be hidden in the place of prayer. When we are trying our best to hide from Jesus, when we're praying, we want to talk all around our issues rather than dealing with where we are. Somebody say it's a safe place. Because it's a safe place, you need to come into a place of honesty about the condition of your soul right now. You need to come into a place of being honest about where you're at, how you're processing, what's been going on with you, and how God wants to bring you into a place of complete wholeness and feel being filled with the aspect of what he wants released in your life. If I was you, I would just lift my hands and say, Lord, thank you for freedom. Thank you for freedom. So God wants to bring you into this place. Here's the next thing that I want to give you, and then I'm going to get out of the way. We're going to move in activation. Okay, listen. We've got to begin to value the power of God. What you don't value, you cannot properly honor. What you do not honor, you cannot get the most out of. What you don't value, you cannot properly honor. What you don't honor, you cannot get the most out of. You cannot say that you love Jesus, but have not embraced that he's a man full of power. Paul said, you know what, this thing that I'm talking about, it is not just... In, in word, and it's not in man's wisdom, but he said, you know what? It is in power. It's in demonstration and power. Somebody say demonstration and power. But we can't skip steps again. We can't just jump to demonstration and power and not deal with your soul first. If we are called to disciple people. We're called to pour into people. We'll be duplicating foolishness and dysfunction. Until we begin to deal with ourselves. And so, so many of us, we want to get to pouring. No, you don't need to move into a pouring time right now. You need to move into a place of, of fasting and prayer. I just cussed you out. I said fasting and prayer. Some only come out by. You've got to get to a place of fasting and prayer. There are lost disciplines in the church. And not just your cute fast that you come up with. You need a Facebook fast. You need more than a Facebook fast. You, you, you need a lot more than a Facebook fast. You need to turn your point over. And you need to begin to cry out to God. And allow him to heal your flesh. Are you understanding me today? When we fast and we pray, we don't fast to get closer to God. You're, Jesus has already done the work for that. We're fasting so we get our flesh out of the way so we can realize he was there all the time. Are you understanding this? So that you can get now your flesh cut back so you can sense and know that he is there. And not only that, that the most of what he wants to release out of you can come out of you. You've got to circumcise the flesh. Is this making sense to anybody today? Then we can move on to demonstration and power. Jesus, his whole message, his whole, his, whole, his whole aspect of what he was releasing was connected to the power of his kingdom. It was not a kingdom without power. This is why he did not feed into the idea that people wanted him to walk into a natural kingdom. That's why he made it very clear to them from the beginning that my kingdom is not of this world. In other words, my power that I possess doesn't come from this earth realm, but the power I possess comes from the heavens. And we worship this alternative Jesus in the body of Christ now that has no power. And the Jesus you've been worshiping is the Jesus that's been fueling your life. Another type of Christ. Bible said in the last days that there would be many Christ that would arise and that would deceive many. And so there are many versions of the Christ that are moving in the earth today and we've decided that we would worship at the version of 
about the one that we like best instead of Jesus the Christ, son of the living God. Jesus' kingdom is a kingdom full of power. Somebody say power. power. You, know, you can't say it like that all sad and wimpy. I said somebody say power. power. Jesus' kingdom is a kingdom full of power. His church is a church full of power. The saints should be saints of power. This is our inheritance in Christ, that we walk in the power of Almighty God. It is not that we should just operate and feel like powerless beings who have no aspect of being able to walk in what God has called us to walk in. We've got to be able to exhibit the power of God. And as we draw closer to the man that is revival, he will begin to birth something on the inside of us that will shake cities once again, that will shake nations once again, that that will transform your family once again. That will open up deaf ears. And that will open up blind eyes and cause the dead to be raised. His power is real. Somebody say power. He wants his power to be displayed in the earth. In order to operate and that level of power is going to take faith. I want you to write this down. Everything in the kingdom of God operates by faith. Everything. You cannot exist in the kingdom of God. You cannot operate in the kingdom of God if you're not operating in faith. Here's the thing about faith. Faith is not faith until you bust the move. Write that down. The Bible says faith without works is dead. Some of you have been talking about, I, I believe in God. I'm walking by, you ain't walking by faith. You haven't stepped out not one time. If you're so full of faith, why haven't you started that business yet? If you're so full of faith, why haven't you went out and did what he told you to do yet? I'm full of faith. You're full of hope. You wish upon a star. You can't be in faith and standing still. So you've got to break that whole idea of I'm waiting on God. That's a lie for why Christians are lazy. Yes. Yes. I'm waiting on God. God is, he's going to move. I'm waiting on God. No, 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 not at all. You're not waiting on God. He is waiting on you to do what you're supposed to do. And you've got to make the shifts into the place of revelation that he wants you to go into. But in order to operate in a life, a life of his power. Christianity is supposed to be supernatural. It makes no sense that it's like you got to come to places to be trained in the supernatural. I want you to think about this. We should not have to have schools of the supernatural like this. We should not have to have special revival meetings. If the church was just the church, are you getting this? If the church just operated according to how God built it in the Bible, yeah. then we would be able to just walk in the thing. But the truth is that we have not seen the real power of God in our churches and in the world around us because we're not seeking him. We're not dealing with our soul. We're not getting into those places. But as we begin to press into the new levels, we should want for Christianity to look the way that God intended for it to look. Jesus was a supernatural man. So how can you be a follower of Christ and not walk in the supernatural? Everything about our Lord was supernatural. His birth was supernatural. Are you understanding this? His death was supernatural. His resurrection was supernatural. When he walked the earth, everything about what he did was supernatural. So why is the supernatural foreign to us? Because another kind of Christ is what's been being taught about. And what's been prevalent on your television screens is a type of Jesus that you have chosen. And not only that, it's the idolatry of the preacher. Are y'all here? The idolatry of the preacher. Where we begin to believe every single thing the preacher does, but we don't have a study life, so we don't know he's teaching us error. 
We are in places where people are moved because somebody operates in the word of knowledge and can tell you your address, but that's all they can tell you. Your name. And you screaming, ah! They said, mother, you knew your name before you came in here, homie. Why are you excited about your name? That's not revelation. Now, after you say my name, I want you to tell me what else God got to say about my name. I don't need you just to call my address. I don't need you just to know my name. I need a destiny word. Y'all don't hear me in London. That can shift me to the place I need to go. Hello? Messing with these game shirts. Trickery. When we align ourselves with him, we operate daily. So supernatural Christianity looks like it doesn't mean that I operate in it when it's time for whatever team I'm on at my church. Listen, yeah. absolutely. You like what he said, absolutely. So it is important that you understand that. We are light and salt. And I'm about to really get into my, 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 uh, my soapbox right now. We're, we're, we're light and salt. That means that we're supposed to affect the world around us. Yes, sir. That doesn't mean that you're supposed to hold all of this power for you to quicken when you get into worship. You don't hold all this power to wait for intercessory prayer for you to look deep and have a parade across the front of the church. You do not wait till you wait for prophetic night when it's time to prophesy. If you're really prophetic, if you really walk in deliverance, if you really walk in healing, you take all of that power to the world around you and see it transformed. I don't believe you got power because your family's still the same way. Your kid's still full of demons. Your mama still look like her head turn around like the poultry guys. I don't know that you really have power. You're quiet in here. If the people closest to you are not being changed by that power, I don't trust your power. We're like, you know, I'm gonna, going to reserve that for when the prophet Elijah calls upon me to prophesy. Reserve my prophetic juices. Serve it. Well, I have a real strong word. <laughs> if we would understand what supernatural Christianity was like, most of us would put down this idol of ministry. So now there's about 30 of you that got that idol in here. Are you in here today? Idol of ministry. This idea that I'm trying to work hard enough to get to a certain place so some man can identify me and put me into some posture, into some type of place. You've got to understand that God spoke to Jeremiah and said, before you were ever in your mother's womb, I ordained you. Now listen to me. I'm about community. I'm about a man laying hands on you. I'm about affirmation in the earth. But before you get this affirmation in the earth, baby, there ought to be something that you ought to hear out of heaven that ought to be able to tell you that the call of God is upon Fighting for an office in the church. The church is the womb of the kingdom. The church is the womb of the kingdom. We birth out into the world. We birth out into the earth systems. But if you are in a place where you only are fighting over who's going to sit on the first row and look deep and wave your hand and feel special and get water and mints brought to you, nobody is concerned about your water, your mints, or who is carrying your little ugly bag if you don't have the real Jesus. 
I'm so dream because you were in these religious sectors and your whole life all you saw was this foolishness and so you just been waiting to be like the pastor or the bishop or the prophet who goes around town with 15 people following behind him and not a drop of anointing why do you need us to follow behind you and you not carrying nothing but bags you have no we are looking for the men and the women who are now carrying oil. Who are those now that carry power on the inside? I wish I had somebody holler power. You gotta understand. We gotta measure according to the word now. We can't measure now according to your activities. You can't measure now according to the things that you are doing. We've got to measure you according to the word of God. And that's what the problem has been with the saints. We refuse to measure. And we have tricked you to feeling like you can't look at that man and woman of God and check them out by the word. But I license you to make sure that you stop following these idiots who do not line up to the way that Jesus exists. I license you to stop. And you don't got to pray, should I leave or should I not leave? Get out of Egypt. Get out of these foolish churches that have you in bondage and look nothing like the Bible. Where in the Bible it says that I have to pray? Let me see God to see if I need to follow an idiot. And you've got to walk in the power. And it's every day. Somebody say, it's every day. Come on, talk to me now. I said, say, it's every day. It's every day. It's every day. Come on, church. Say, it's every day. It's every day. It's every day. It's every day. Most of us, a lot of us are just flowing off of a corporate anointing. That's why you only see when you're in the house. And you think you are knowing it because when you get in all this glory, you're like, <laughs> I had a vision. I bet you did. So did all of us. You're not special. What you did was you got in a room where a corporate anointing was, where the spirit of prophecy was in operation. So, of course, you saw something. That don't mean nothing. What I want to know what you do when you step up out of here. You got any dreams then? Do you have any visions? What was the last time you laid hands on the sick and they recovered? What was the last time you cast the devil out? When was the last time? Are you just running behind whoever they is, who the is is? The hottest thing, spending all your money, conference hoes. Spend your money for all these doggone conferences. Like the woman with the issue of blood that spent all she had and went to many physicians and still sick. Oh, y'all hear what I said to you? I said there's a bunch of women and men with an issue of blood in here. You have spent all your money and you have seen a whole lot of physicians but you still sick. But I want to tell you that the real Jesus is stepping into London now. And if you just trust the him of his garment, baby, you are Every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. The enemy, let me tell you what's in the room. The enemy has gotten you angry with your family. You were at Thanksgiving dinner and arguments came. They didn't like your chemicals. So you got frustrated. They didn't like the way you made dinner. So now you have an attitude. You have a problem with, with your family members. And it's the trick of the enemy to make you no longer care about their freedom and deliverance. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you go into a place of now you're like, as long as I got mine, baby, I'm fine. I'm not studying these old crazy people called my family. But the reality is that God's promises for household, uh, salvation, and deliverance. And God said, I'm the God of Abraham. I'm the God. 
God of Isaac, watch out now. And I'm the God of Jacob. And if you'll let me deal with your soulless issues, I'll get you from the place where you stop being so rejected. Every time somebody says something about you, you act like a little five-year-old baby in the corner. You gotta get somewhere and become mature in Jesus. That everything doesn't shake you the way it shake you. And you can be able to now minister to your family instead of leaving them behind. Come on, Joseph. Once you've got your deliverance, you gotta remember your family. Joseph's family came to the place of his deliverance in the place of his freedom. And he had the opportunity that if he wanted to, he could have cast his family out. But he sat there and said, no, not only am I going to be free, but I'm going to now let my family become partakers of my freedom. I'm not going to let my family become partakers of my abundance. Why are you sitting with all that goodness and forgot about your mom? I know she's crazy, but she need deliverance too. Oh, why have you gotten all this goodness and forgot about your brother, forgot about your sister. God wants to revolutionize your life. I wish somebody would say every day, every day, every day, every day, every day, every day. Every day. Walking in the glory and the power of God every single day. Are you getting this? You've been brought into the kingdom. Listen, to be able to bring others into the kingdom. Yes. You're not doing your job if you're not invading the darkness around you. There's too many Christians that are still afraid of the dark. And you think it's deep when you say stuff like, huh, you know what, I just don't want to be around them. I don't want to walk with them. And most of it, we go around talking what the Bible says. How can two walk together? <laughs> Unless they agree. First of all, you read the Bible out of context. Because when he was talking about that, he was not talking about man's relationships. He was talking about the relationship between God and man. He said, how can we walk together unless we agree? And you sitting somewhere pushing people out. Here's the thing. You don't use your gifts to shun people. Are y'all getting this tonight? You cannot use your gift to shun people. We'll use our prophetic grace and anointing to be able to push people away. I know I'm in it now. Because you say, I discern something. I see something. And whatever it is that you see, now you're using that against the people. Instead, that you forgot about the aspect of revelation stewardship. That God gives you revelation for you to properly steward that revelation. And when we are prophetic, we are not supposed to just see. But much of what we do is pray. That's why we get this word shamar. Somebody say shamar. Whoa. Okay. Didn't mean to do that. To hedge around about his doors. Listen, you got to, you got to be able to shamar. So if all you do is see, 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 but you don't pray, shut up. You don't see, so then you can be like, I'm not talking to her no more when I see her at church. Now, I saw, I had a dream last night, and the Lord showed me she was sleeping with three men, and that thing can't jump on me because I've been chased for the Lord for one week, and so I surely can't get it to mess up my, my deliverance. against people. The Bible says that we're supposed to profit from your gift. We profit from your gift. You don't use what God gave you against people. If the real love of God is operated inside of you, when you see what you see, it ought to draw you to them. There's responsibility in revelation. <laughs> Especially if you're building in the context of a house. If you're building, and if you ain't building in the context of a house, shut up anyway. But if you're building in a context of a house, you got to understand God is giving you that revelation to strengthen and to build. Are you getting this today? To strengthen and to build. 
And so you cannot receive revelation and then push people out. That means your family. That means your boss that you can't stand. The reason, the reason why you were on that job in the first place is because it is your assignment. Some of you are like, Lord, send me to the nation. You ain't called to no nation. Sit down somewhere and be quiet. Everybody that's halfway prophetic, talking about they're a prophet to the nation. Everybody, it ain't even that many nations. We can all be a prophet to the nation. Somebody got to be a prophet to that corner store. Somebody got to be a prophet to that roach. Somebody got to be a prophet. Hello, somebody. Everybody can't be a prophet to the nations. It's, I mean, it's such a joke. And we have, we have out of order sent people to the nations that we're supposed to go. With these, with these, oh, let me stop you. <laughs> white garbs on, going to all these nations, sit down somewhere, lady. And that's why some of these prophets that were on your television screen are crazy now because y'all sent them to the nations they weren't supposed to go. Crazy, they lost their whole mind. You're going to send them out. They were never called to go to the nations. That's why you got to be careful about your fans because your fans will push you into places you should not be in. You gotta prefer founders over fans. Y'all quiet in here today. I said your fans will have you thinking about stuff of yourself that you was never called to do. That's why I don't care how the Lord elevates me. I make sure I stick real close to my father. Y'all ain't saying that. that well, I can just leave a look at me and tell me what y'all can see when I'm a little off. And I'm getting a little funny. He holding his hand while I'm preaching today. Listen to me. You gotta understand that God wants to bring you into a place that you do not listen to your fans instead of your fathers. When the fans begin to cry your name too loudly, you'll begin to look at your fathers as the enemies. Fathers bring correction. Fathers don't always holler, you are great. I tell the people that are connected to mine on it, I don't gotta turn around every single day and tell you how wonderful you are. You got enough fans for that. You need me to be a daddy when I get around you. And I don't need to tell you how wonderful you are. I need to tell you to fix your character. Yeah, you need somebody to tell you that your breath stinks. I can't hear you. You need somebody to be able to tell you what's going on with you. Hello. The real father, you know, fans will look at you, know your breath stinks, and won't say nothing to you. A father will come in front of you, ah, mm, no, the breath stinks. Over the mint. The first order of prophetic ministry is mints. If you wanted a, a real nugget today, I want you to write that down. The anointing of the mint. I am sick of stink breath people prophesying to me. I am sick of it across America. And then they want to gather around you in groups with stinky prayer. It's offensive. I cannot hear the word of the Lord. I don't understand nothing you're saying because the whole time I'm praying to say, God, please. Deliver me from this thing, <laughs> Miss in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Somebody say every day. Every day. You've been anointed for your boss. Your job is your assignment. You don't need to go to a nation, meaning the nations of the world. He sent you to a nation, your job. He sent you to a people group, your job. And if you will stop being so angry at work every day, then you can fulfill your assignment and maybe you can get a promotion or maybe you can get moved to another place. But until you fulfill your assignment, you're gonna be still right there at that computer with your complaining tail. Are you in here today? Right, so you've got to get to this place it's every day. You understand that? When you're in Starbucks, and when you're in Starbucks, you have to realize that there are, there are things that you must be aware of. When you walk with Jesus, when you walk with Holy Spirit, you must ask them to make you sensitive. Sensitive to your assignment. We become a careless people where we don't really care about who's around us. Most people don't want our Christ because we are standoffish. 
The ugliness of your face is stopping your anointing. The fact that you don't smile is stopping your anointing. You want to talk about, I just don't have time for all that. What do you mean? What do you mean? You don't have time for joy? You mean evil individual that wants people to think that you're prophetic because you're ugly. The reality is that you need to get some joy in your soul. Hell, somebody. You need to get delivered so you can smile. I'm dealing with you in here because there's a culture around prophetic people that you go around looking ugly and you think that's deep. your face look like that? Are y'all in here today? Yes. Some of you don't understand this, that when you get into your assignment, I'm going to do this and I'm going to activate and get out of here. When you get into your assignment, is this good to you? Feel like it was worth your money? Yes. Praise God. Listen to me. Let me say this to you. When you really know, when you're really in your assignment, listen to me, money is attracted to your assignment. Clear, you're here. Uh, money is attracted to your assignment. But listen, but if you're in your assignment but not activated in your assignment, there's a difference. So some of us are in our assignment but we're not functional there, meaning that we're in a place but we're not functioning in that place. So we've been assigned to our family but we're not functioning there. We've been assigned to our job but we're not functioning there. We've been assigned to the school we're in, but we're not functioning there. And until you function, people will not be able to see you who are supposed to see you. You know, our gifts shall bring us before great men. But if you don't operate and use those gifts, how will they see you? Are you here today? The more you get into your function, you find wealth in your function. I know what I'm talking about. Absolutely. Absolutely. You'll find wealthy. And you've got to own who you are. Stop trying to be somebody who, who's not out here. Trying to be those people who don't operate in the supernatural. Walk in who you are and let God send you what's supposed to come to you. When I made a decision at another level last year, I was just going to be who I was. I'm just different. I'm not like every preacher. I'm not like every prophet. I have a call that's different from others. I'm going to walk in my call. I'm going to be who I God has called me to be. I don't care who looks at me strange. I don't care who talks about me. Can I tell Tell you when I made that decision last year in the midst of my pain that I was dealing with in that season God began to open up stuff for me that I had never seen before he began to bring elevation I had never walked in before because I was in my function so Jesus somebody holler Jesus okay you gotta know Jesus all right come on instruments let's, let's go that was good enough you got some revival tips yeah you gotta know Jesus that's the main thing Know Jesus. And uh, know Jesus. Somebody say, know Jesus. The real one. Yeah. The real Jesus. Okay. Uh, who was hoping we have any time? How much time I got? That's your time. Okay. That's going to be fun. How, now, how, how many of you like to have fun in the Holy Ghost? Yeah. Y'all don't like fun. Y'all just lame. I mean, how many of you really like to have fun in the Holy Ghost? No, supernatural is fun to me. I mean, I'm here, yeah. good time. And uh, as, I, as I do ministry every single day in every context, and what I was teaching you today is not something that I'm just teaching you. It's something that I live by. That I'm sensitive to my assignment every single day of my life. That every place that God brings me into, that I can be aware, you can play, that be aware and be alert to those that are around me. Not only that, we're raising up a people in California that can hear the heart of God and that can hear the cry of the people around you. God wants to bring you into a place of the shift where your ears begin to be open now and you can hear the cries of those that are on your streets, those that are in the apartment next to you. You can begin to hear the cries of people who are in your community, who are on your jobs, that you can begin to hear the cries and the souls of those that are around you. If you want to hear that at a different level, just lift your hands right now. I believe the Lord is activating that for you. Come on. 
He's taken off the callous off of your heart. He's taken the callous off of your heart. He's taken off the extra off of your heart. And he's bringing you into a place now. He said, I'll trace you. Give me the hard heart and I'll give you a heart of fleshless trade. I want to bring you into a place now where you become sensitive to my plan and my will. Lord, I pray in Jesus' holy name, begin to go in now and begin to deal with the hearts of your people. Those that become hard against their family. Those that have become hard against those that are around them. Give us a heart of we pray. Open our eyes that we might see. Open our ears that we may hear. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Burn us into a new season and into a new day. Put your hands and cry out to him now. Lord, heal my heart. Bye. 
It will not stop our ability to minister to those that you've called us to minister to. We thank you, Lord, for your freedom. Thank you, Lord, for freedom. Thank you, Lord, for freedom. In Jesus' name. All right. Well, let the altar, you can make your way back to your seat. Got to do this now. Thank you. 
couple of snakes attached around some of your spinal areas. And I feel like some of you, there's pressure points in your back as a result of some practices that you had engaged yourself in. I don't know if it's like the yoga things and all of that. And the Lord says that it's actually not natural. That pain is not natural, but it's there because it's a pressure point of a spirit. Now, if there's any one of you that have practiced yoga, practiced any of these kind of funny things, I want you to repent right now. Repent for it. Any one of you that looks to search for your inner peace, that were channeling things, I want you to repent for everyone. Close your eyes. Right now. And even if you're not standing, I want you to repent in this room. There's a corporate anointing. I feel like the snake is about to come up out of the spine. Come on, it's coming out. It's There it is. It's coming out. Something's coming. Come on, something's breaking. There it is. That snake. Come on, it's, there's a deliverance that's about to hit. And when it happens, something's going to pop in your back. And even if you didn't engage in yoga, some of you are under deep oppression. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost even as you're doing it. There we go. There we go. In the name of Jesus, you spirit of witchcraft, I command you to loose every pressure point. I command you to loose every pressure point. You spirit of witchcraft, curses, we break them. For it wasn't it real? But a snake jumped out. And what happened? Paul burnt it with fire. We loose the fire of God in this place. It gets every word curse and every form of spiritual activity. Come on, stir up intercessors, charge this place. La mando de Loose your body. I heard the name of it, I got it. You spirit of pharmacia, I command you to come out by the finger of God in the name of Jesus that is above every name. We take authority over pills. We take authority over addiction. Yeah, uh, what's these, uh, ibuprofen and all of these addictions. These addictions, some of you pop pills consistently. That spirit of pharmacia, come on, I feel it, stir up the room. That spirit of pharmacia is leaving you and it's affecting your sleep in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now I want you to begin to bend their back as you're praying in the spirit. Pray, come on, don't observe. Bend their back, come on, bend it. Pharmacia, come out, come on. Pharmacia, come out. Pharmacia, come out. Now somebody needs to lift up their knees. Lamba brega tu sunda na bata. Levante le me kulia sunda na bande. Come on, Mark, judge this thing. Get the intercessors of the church. Come on, Father Kaya, I feel you. Come out. Lamba bande gani andalo du mi asuku. Lamba bande me kunda na kanta. Now you will not have another surgery. And I've been paying your life, you're too young, you're too young, you're too young. You do not have arthritis, you do not have scoliosis, but in the name of Jesus. If you get someone that's completely pain free, I want you to lift your hand so I can know. Ask them, what's their pain level now? When they're completely free, I want you to raise your hand so I can know. We got Achille here in the back to my left. You're right, this is good. Anybody else pain free? Okay, that's the one I got. Okay, so you may have one over here. Okay, that's two, and, uh, the one in the back, that's three. Come on, y'all, thank God for his healing. Thank God for his healing. All right, so who still has a little pain? You still got a little pain? Yes, because I didn't see, yes, okay. So we're gonna pray again just for a few, for, 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 for a couple of minutes here. Just gonna pray again. Did the pain decrease at all for those that still have pain? 
Yes, it decreased here. It decreased. So if it can come down, it can go, right? Hello, I said if it came down, it can go, right? So I want, in a, in a second here, we're going to pray again. We're going to believe God for just a complete wholeness and healing and with the pain to decrease all the way. Go ahead, pray again. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Okay, no pain. We got another healing. Come on, we got another healing. This is good. All of it goes. All of it goes. All of it goes. Spirit of God within us. 
Are you hearing me? But we're going to do that. You're going to pray in the spirit within. Then I'm going to tell you to stop again. You're going to sit down. When you sit down, I'm going to ask God to reveal some kind of prophetic revelation to you. Whether it's a dream, a color, a name, a prophetic word for yourself, for someone, whatever it is. Somebody say it's a safe place. I don't believe it. You don't sound like you believe it either. Somebody say it's a safe place. It's cool. When you're in the lab, it's okay to make mistakes. Hello? That's the power of prophetic community. This is the safe space that we learn to grow in our gifts so that when we go out, we can operate in a space where we can be accurate and be on time with him, okay? Are you getting this? Clear? All right, so I want everyone to, uh, uh, to go ahead and stand again real quick. Just stand again real quick. We're not going to take a long to do this. And then I got a, an item activation that I'm going to do with the people that feel like they're prophets. Okay, I want everybody to tell me what's praying the Holy Ghost. Let's go. Come on. No whisper, pray. Go. Type with. Father, I thank you. The spirit of prophecy is manifested in this atmosphere right now. You're giving revelation. Lord, I thank you that you're releasing it now. Colors, names strategies, ideas, words for ourselves, words for others, words for this city. Open our hearts to receive, our ears are open to receive, our eyes are open to receive in these moments in this safe space. Don't feel the pressure to be extra. The Lord may just give you one word. It's okay. It's okay. We're just stepping into the flow of the prophetic path. So I want you to write down, I want you to type whatever you hear and go receive. We're going to give you about two minutes to do that. We're not going to take long. We don't have a lot of time. We're going to take about two minutes, and then I'm going to let about two of you share what the Lord gave you. And then I'm going to call forth some of those that feel like the prophets to do a specific exercise with you. volunteers that want to share what the Lord gave you. I have a lot of time to stop with you. Come on, you all be stirring, prophesying any other time when you're not in accountability. Come on, somebody raise your hand. Come on. Come on, pressure. Come on, sir. Okay. What's your name? 
and then uh, when the Lord gave me, okay? Uh, no more than two minutes, okay? All right, praise God. Hi, my name is Shay. Say hi, Shay. Hi, Shay. Don't be rude. refreshing that's coming uh, to God's people. I saw that there was divine reinforcements. Specifically what I saw was men on horses. I saw angelic reinforcements that were sent for warfare. I saw enlarging and overtaking of new territories. I saw that the army is formed and is coming to fruition in this hour, says the Spirit of God. Uh, the season of the radical is upon us. There's a new rank and a new order coming to the radical of God in this hour. The radicals shall belong, but furthermore, they're going to stand out amongst God's people as captains in this hour. And the radicals will begin to lead as the Lord has commanded in this hour. Uh, you married? Where is she in? Okay. Um, um, look at your hands real quick. Father, I thank you so much for what you're doing in this man's life. And I pray for him and his wife. I thank you, Lord, that this is going to be great days of, of revival in family. You're going to cause for there to be a fresh unity. And when I saw it, it's going to be like a like a new honeymoon. It's, it's like it's going to be uh, fresh all over again. And I thank you, Lord God, that you're awakening not only him, but his spouse. They're going to begin to walk into new revelations and understanding of what it means, oh God, to partner in ministry. And so, Father, I pray in Jesus' name that every single attack of the enemy that would come up against this union be broken right now in Jesus' name. I curse the works of darkness that were trying to come and that any type of division the enemy would try to break. We thank you for it being broken totally in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. What are those people that you, you feel like you're a prophet? Don't go. Put your hand down now. It was more of y'all. Raise them high. Okay. Give me, give me gray hair from last night, right? Yeah. 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 And, uh, keep your hand raised. Come on, brother. All right. So I would usually do my blind prophet um, activate. I don't have no, I forgot about to ask for the scars. So just, just do me a favor. Just turn that way and face that wall. Okay? You hold on just a second. Keep your eyes looking that way, okay? So, oh, you got one? Go ahead. Help the woman of God. You got some beautiful hair. Come on, you precious. Come back here, baby. She gonna, she gonna tie this around your eyes. You straight with that? Don't mess up with her lashes because they are flicky. Do you understand me? Don't you mess with the lashes. All right. So, I'm gonna, how this works is that I'm gonna pull somebody out of the audience. I'm gonna put you back to back with this lady. She's going to give you the word of the Lord. Why are you blindfolded? I have people across the country that tell me I'm, I'm opening up people's third eye and all this dumb stuff. Uh, <laughs> idiots. Uh, but, we, we, but the whole reason is because a lot of you, when you prophesy, you get moved by emotions. So the more people cry, your word gets larger and larger. First you said that God was going to send them up the street. Now they're going to age them. It's just your word just gets bigger and bigger and bigger, the more emotional. Or if people do not emotionally respond, you think that you haven't gotten a good word. If you ever prophesied to my wife, you'll feel like you are not a prophet. Because my wife will look at you straight face like, what? And that's just because she's receiving. And to her, you know, you prophesy to me, I'm going to fall out on the floor emotional and stuff like that. I probably miss half of the word. My wife is going to make sure she gets everything that she's supposed to get out of that word. And so you can't be moved by emotion either way. Am I teaching you good? Yeah. Well, tell me then. I say, am I teaching you good? Yeah. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you with this. I'm going to call one person out of the audience and then have them come in. And, uh, and we would just go back to back with her. 
and then I'm going to give you the mic, and then you got two minutes to inquire of the Lord, His Word, and prophesy. place where you thought I was leaving you, the place where you thought I wasn't there is the place I'm going to propel you from. When you speak, you wonder why people listen and you still doubt the gift that I've placed on the inside of you. But realize, my baby girl, realize that I am the one who told you. And yet, yes, yes, you will speak. Yes, you will do what I've called you to do. Yes, you are frightened and you are afraid. But the grace that I've placed on your life will push you further than your parents even thought you could go. I've got you. That's what I keep hearing as I got you. I'm holding your hand in my foot. Awesome. You can take this off. Okay, turn around. Now, first I want you to see who you minister to. And um, did, that, did that minister to you? It, it, you felt like that was accurate? Glory to God. Let's thank God for the power of this word. Somebody say, now that was a good word. Now the Lord says, God, be ready because I'm about to send you out like an arrow of deliverance. And the Lord says, I'm about to shake up your whole entire life. And in two weeks' time, the Lord said, it'll feel like everything was flipped upside down, but it'll be me. And he said, don't reject what I'm calling for you to do. Because the Lord says, I am sending those that I want you to activate. And much that you saw me do today is what you'll begin to do with others. And so the Lord said, get ready to be an activator. Get ready to turn on those that are around you but they're in need of a mother don't tell me no don't tell me no say yes to me stop telling me no tell me yes because this is your season to the spirit of almighty god that's good all right break it down uh real quick all right so where is it oh i need this bottle so we're going to do we're going to do an object activation. See? So, for instance, um, this is a towel, right? This is a towel. So, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. come here, young lady. What's your name? Boo? Ruda? Rudo. That's a nice name. Come on. So, just to give you an example of what you're going to do. And the object activations, we take an object 
and we ask God for a word to use this object. So I would say, Rudo, this is a town. And the Lord said, even as this town uh, is used to wipe the tears of uh, people, he's going to begin to wipe your tears. Because you've been in a season of great weeping, and you've been in a season of great stretching, and you ask God, when will this be over? And he says, now comes the towel from heaven, and I'm going to begin to wipe your tears, said the Spirit of God. But you will now begin to cry new tears, and these shall be tears of great joy. But you will find a reason to celebrate in the season that's ahead. I'm turning the corner in your life, and I'm going to begin to activate and awaken the mandate and the mantle that's upon you. So God arise, and he says, will you cry for those that have no voice? Will you cry for those who cannot be heard? For you will be raised up as a defender of the weak. That's right, that's right, that's right. Even there's some things the Lord's going to cause for you to step into with social justice. The Lord says, hear me, daughter. But this is your season, say the Spirit of God. You see what I'm saying? All right. You, praise God. All right. So, so this is a water bottle, okay? Uh, We've met before, huh? I've seen you before, yes? Last year, okay. All right, so I want you to prophesy to her using that bottle. God says to the Lord that as the rivers of water flows through the cities, that God is going to use you as a river and a well where people will be healed and be made whole. And that out of your loins, God will raise up an army, a mighty army that came broken, but through you they will be made whole in Jesus' mighty name. I say that's a good word. I think you can be seated. Come here, mother. Oh, sing it, prophet. All excited about her. I say, man, give me a start for again, blindfold this lady. Come on, wrap her around her eyes. Now, I want you to do something different. Listen to me. The Lord spoke to me and said that there was an army of creatives in London that he was raising up to operate inside of the prophetic. And many of you have felt as if that you could not find your place in the prophetic because you don't prophesy with just thus said the Lord. Some of you prophesy as you paint. Some of you prophesy as you dance. Even some of you prophesy as you do visual art. And the Lord is beginning to awaken you. And he wants you to know you have an inheritance. Holy Ghost, help me. You have an inheritance in the prophetic. And he has a mandate that he has for you to do. And so the Lord said, let her be an example to you that he is raising up all. It's a renaissance of creativity that's going to begin to happen in London. And I will begin to gather them, said the Lord. And I will begin to bring them together, said the Lord. And the Lord says, prophesy. All right. My time is running. Uh, I'm going to give you the mic and I want you to sing the, the song of the Lord, the word of the Lord through, through songs in this place. Just 
voices, get ready, daughter, for I'm stirring. I'm stirring you into another dimension, into another place with me. For it seemed like at one level you felt like you were plateaued and you asked God, give me more, show me more. And he says, God, I've opened that season to you. For you're coming into the place of more now. And I'm going to push you stronger. I'm going to push you harder. For the Lord says, not only is this stirring for you, but you'll begin to stir up others around you. And the Lord said, I give you the responsibility now to activate and stir those that are in your vicinity. Get ready, God. But it's your time to run now. The Lord's, the Lord's doing something with your money. I saw supernatural provision. I heard the number eight. And the Lord told me in the next eight weeks, I'm going to lose a financial miracle. You ask God, Lord, where is my provision? And the Lord said, surely I am bringing it to you. But have I not spoken and made it clear that I'm your papa? That's what I heard him say. He says, I'm your papa, and I will bring to you what belongs to you. I feel like a thief that's come in your midst and stole of your seed and your harvest. But the Lord says, I'm a restorer. And I'm going to bring restoration to you, says the Spirit of Almighty God. Lift your hands in here. Father, I thank you. Come on, lift your hands on you. I thank you, Lord God, for what you've done in these moments today. I thank you, Lord, that you bring us back into a fresh hunger for Jesus. But revival is not an event, but revival is a man, and his name is Jesus. Let the real Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, arise in our lives. We revolt and we push away every imposter, every false doctrine, every doctrine of demons. We push away this idea of this seeker-friendly mentality that wants to press the real Jesus out of the church. But we say we want Jesus. Come on, say it out of your mouth, church. We want it. God said, say we want Jesus. We want Jesus, hey church, we want Jesus, give us Jesus, give us Jesus, open your mouth real quick and cry out for Jesus, church, come on, don't stop, open your mouth.
And I see the gathering of sons and daughters, even in this property the Lord will give to you. And the Lord said, you'll begin to pour, and you'll 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 pour. Now the Lord is just sitting refreshing to the both of you. But you've been giving out a lot, so here's the refreshing. Here's the refreshing. Here's the refreshing. Here's the refreshing. And the enemy's been trying to torment your mind at times concerning the job that you are doing. Am I doing a good job? What am I doing? Am I doing well? I bind every attack of the enemy against your thought process. But the Lord says, well done, son. Well done, son. And he says, Arabasura, they're refreshing, baby. You've been holding a whole lot together. Just receive that. It's the refreshing. that will be had 
even before this year closes. But the Lord said many have heard and they've done wrong. But the truth is they didn't know anything better for they did not experience better. But you have. And the Lord said I brought you into better in this season. That you would reach back to those that were actually the ones that were the aggressors. And were actually those that harmed you in your heart. And I brought you into higher levels of revelation and understanding of what it means. The Lord says to walk closely with me, say God. So now I'm going to bring you into the place where you'll reach back and you'll say, but God, they were the ones that did it to me. Why do I have to? He said, because you're my son. He said, I'm going to cause for healing to come to your family. And that healing and that wholeness is going to close a season that is not fully closed yet for you. It's been open, but the Lord says, I'm the one that's going to restore your soul. And this is going to prepare you for the marriage that will come one day. This will prepare you. But the Lord says, until you come into this place of wholeness and healing, you will not be able to receive the one that I will send to your life. But I need you to be a whole man. The Lord says, stop tiptoeing around it. Stop delaying it. Stop running from it. But I'm making you whole, said the Spirit of Almighty God. You are my son, and this is your hour. Run into it, said the Spirit of Almighty God. So, Father, we thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for how you're moving. And the Lord says, son, for you there's a priest word in you. And many have known you, obviously, for administration. But the Lord says, I'm awakening that preaching anointing on the inside of you. And you will preach and demons will scream. Leave us alone. For that deliverer that's on the inside of you. It's about to awaken. want to get close to me because I'm close to dad. The Lord says some that will be true for. But he said some it will not. For many I will gather around you because they need they need that story of breakthrough and healing. People see your smile but they don't know the journey. They don't know what it took for you to break through into this season. They don't know the fight that you had to break through in your mind to get yeah. it. But the Lord said, I took you that way. Not the easy way. I had to take you that journey. Because there were many who would walk the same way and would need you to tell them they could make it. <laughs> they could make it when they would even get home. And the, the enemy would try to torment their minds into the old season. But you had to fight your way through. And the Lord said, I had to take you that way, son. Because many need your story and your journey. So the Lord said, not only the preach work, but you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. And the Lord said, and many will read your writings, and many will find healing and deliverance through it, said the Spirit of God. The Lord said, I'm going to begin to awaken this prophetic thing in you at a new level now. And you, you know, you, you've gone here and there, and you've said what the Lord has said, but there's coming an aggressive prophetic anointing on you in this season. And I see you beginning to arise and prophesy, and the Lord is going to invade your dream world. And even the next nine weeks, God's going to begin to give you dream after dream, said the Lord. And the Lord said, I'll even begin to reveal secrets to you, even concerning those that are in the house. And the Lord said, be not afraid in this season. Open your mouth and prophesy. But well, the Lord said, I am going to give you revelation. And I'm going to give you insight in this season. And he said, son, get ready, because I am creating a new heart in you. A new heart in you. That's an enemy that's been uh, trying to come up against your heart. Okay? Even with some of some, some sons in the house, there's an enemy that wanted to be a boulder between you and brothers. But the Spirit of God, I saw, I saw like a hammer come from heaven. Yeah. And the hammer crushed the boulder. And that blocker that where there's been limited connectivity. And you said, I'll let you in, but so far, but I'm not fooling with you, crazy people. But the Lord said, in this next season, I'm going to crush the boulder. And I'm now going to create a new level of connection between you and brotherhood in this season. And, and you've been right to be choosing, 
But the Lord said, there's many others that I'll bring to you in this season. Open your eyes to see. He said, the Spirit of Almighty God. So, Father, I thank you for what you're doing. And you're made to be a very rich man. The wealth belongs to you. It's a part of your mandate. It's a part of what God is going to give you to bring transformation into the nations. And so I pray in Jesus' name, creativity, innovation, let it be loosed upon you in this hour. And the Lord said, I'm setting you up for great riches in this season. Get ready, because I'm going to use you, God said. But the Lord said, I'm going to deal with your soul just a little bit more before I launch you into this season, said the Spirit of grace. Come on, somebody celebrate what God is doing. In Jesus' name. Come on and give him a praise. Come on and lift up the high name of our God. Come on and lift up the high name of our God. Lift up the high name of our God. Come on and praise Him. Come on and praise Him. Come on, are you guys tired? Many of you feel stirred. Stretch your hands towards Apostle Sherman. Father, we just thank you for the deposit, for the blessing, for the grace that you've put upon us. Come on, I want you to just bless Apostle Sherman from the depth of your spirit.